Hi, welcome to part three in this custom LCD design tutorial and ta-da! We have our finished product. Check this out now. If you haven't seen the two previous videos, I'll link them in at the end and down below where we actually discuss uh, designing this thing and all the aspects that uh, go into that. And we've finally got our custom prototype delivered. This is the uh, for the new micro supply uh, project which we're slowly working on. Fully custom LCD from scratch and I think it cost a grand total of 138 US dollars for five of these. It was a hundred dollars, hundred US dollars for tooling, plus uh, like thirty-three dollars for courier delivery. But it did take them a couple of months. Um, I know it's been three months since the last video. We just haven't had time to uh, do this video. That's all. But yeah, um, they finally came through, and we got five of these things. And check it out. It looks like a bought one, doesn't it? And these are like supposed to be just like samples. They gave us uh, five of them, but this looks like any production LCD I've ever seen. I'll show you this up close for those who want to uh, see the pin attachments down there. They they look glued in very nicely. I mean, nothing about this looks like it's you know like a a prototype. You really wouldn't tell this apart from a production. LCD really so I'm not sure of the exact steps although there are a lot of steps and I'll put up a graphic of that of what goes into actually manufacturing these uh, LCDs there's just so many steps it's uh, crazy I'm not sure you know at, at what liberties they take with those uh, steps to get you these uh, prototyping quote marks um, LCDs but geez it, it looks pretty good so as seen in a previous video, uh, this is the data sheet they gave us based on our original uh, drawing and it looks like the real thing. It's not actually one to one scale there, but you know, it's got the bump on the end like that down there and uh, you know, all the dimensions are absolutely bang on, no problems whatsoever. And for those playing along at home, here's all our specs. It's a positive mode uh, uh, super twist uh, pneumatic, uh, eighth inch you know, designed for eighth uh, duty cycle, uh, quarter bias, six o'clock viewing angle, which if you don't know, this is the bottom of the LCD. So the viewing angle is like, it's not directly on, it's optimum viewing angle, sorry, um, is like uh, six o'clock is actually uh, like looking down like if you've got the product flat on the bench, you're looking down like that as the uh, camera would here. So we're basically, I'm viewing this with the camera at the uh, six o'clock angle. Operating temperature, minus 10 to 50, good enough for Australia. Storage temp goes up to 60. Uh, designed for an operating voltage of 3.3 volts. Here's where we might have an issue, which we'll go into. Um, designed for a 64 hertz frame frequency. The polarizer on the front is a transmissive type, i.e. you can actually see through the thing and it uses an adhesive type rather than I guess just like sandwiched together and held together with the glue on the outside or something like that. So anyway they use adhesive uh, down and the back polarizer is reflective because this is not designed for a backlight at all. Um, so you know, I guess maybe you could edge light the thing if you wanted to but backlight wasn't a requirement for this thing. And of course it's a uh, pin based uh, one and of course we could order exactly the same LCD. Nothing would change if we wanted to use uh, zebra strips, the uh, uh, conductive uh, elastomer rubber with this thing. Um, they would simply just leave off the pins and then the contacts would be on the bottom there and they would make contacts with your um, conductive um, zebra strip and Bob's your uncle. So I'm sure that we could uh, change between a Zebra uh, contact one and a pin based one with basically no change in spec. It'd be cheaper because then uh, they wouldn't have to do the pins, but I haven't actually quoted that up. And of course, this is actually quite a complex LCD. It's got a bar graph and, you know, uh, what is it, two, four, uh, five different um, uh, four digit uh, seven segment uh, displays on it. And there's the uh, segment and com, how they actually join them all together inside, um, as we looked at in a previous video. And it basically uses uh, eight commons and 32. Uh, pins on the thing. doesn't necessarily use all of them in all uh, circumstances. There's a couple of ones which aren't connected in here. But yeah, we basically needed an eight common uh, driver with the thing with a 32 segment. So we decided to use a Holtec uh, chipset, the Holtec um, HT1622 to drive this thing. 
I know what you're saying. Shut up, Dave. Plug it in. Show us it working. Okay, well, here we go. We've just got a little uh, test board here. Don't get excited. This is just a um, a micro supply, uh, just a, like a test bed that we can use. So here we go. Let's plug it in. And ta-da! Look at that. Wow. Like I bought one. Wow. And those segments look good, don't they? But... There's a bit of an issue. Let me show you. So well, there we go. There's the digits up close. And that's from roughly the uh, 6 o'clock viewing position. Normal viewing position. That's from bang on uh, 90 degrees there. And uh, sorry, uh, we're getting a little bit of uh, glare off the uh, overhead lights there. But it's not too shabby, is it? But although that looks okay, there is a bit of an issue which, with this, which we only noticed when we uh, started to use the thing. Let me actually switch it on here, and we get our larger digits like that. And they look okay, but you can actually... I'm not sure if this will show up on camera. I'll have to look at the edit, edit later, but that V is not the best. And you'll notice that when the digits change, they are a bit faded. There are some digits in there which do which are like not like the others and it's like a drive problem with the lcd but as i said uh, we are using that holtec hd 1622 uh, driver chip which is designed specifically for this um and there are no like uh, software commands like there's no uh you know registers in there that we can screw up the bias voltage or anything like that is supposed to be able to handle this just fine if you stare at it for a while you might especially look if i go to a higher angle like this up here like it works uh, by the way angle um you know it's designed for six o'clock which is roughly about there like straight on is there so it looks really good from the low angles like that it really starts to fade out so it's it's by no means you know the world's best um lcd but Oh, look, that one's not too... That one's pretty good, isn't it? At that angle. Anyway, it could be, you know, studio lights and stuff like that. But anyway, if I tilt that up, so we're looking down on it, you can see that some of the segments just aren't as crisp as some of the others. And that includes the V, that segment there. So I, I suspect that they're all on a common. I'll have to double check that. But if they are, then we've just got something slightly out. And we contacted the manufacturer, and they didn't uh, know off the top of their head, of course, but they said, hey, you know, it could be just a dry voltage issue, so try increasing the supply voltage to the chip. Now, our Holtec, we're, and we're using our Holtec chip at 3.3 volts. We specified a 3.3 volt nominal, uh, L, you know, um, supply voltage LCD, but it just looks like maybe one of them is just, you know, slightly out. Pretty sure that's going to show up on camera. And, of course, if you take it back to 90 degrees, it looks fine and dandy. You can kind of just see it maybe on the uh, ideal 6 o'clock angle there. But anyway, go to that high angle. Yeah, so we might have to hack into this thing and increase our, the supply voltage of our chip. It can actually go higher. So, yeah, it just wasn't quite as good as we we're expecting. We don't know whether or not this is just a prototype, um, as we said, but, of course... That's the idea of Getty Prototypes, is you can see what the quality is going to look like. And, you know, you wouldn't just go, oh, you know, she'll be right. It's only a prototype. It'll be better in production. No, you know, <laughs> you want to solve this um, uh, problem now. So anyway, it might get in there and hack the voltage on there and uh, increase it and see if it makes a difference on that. Uh, it, they've got to be on the same common, surely. And sure enough, they are. Look at this. If we follow the money... For the line down here, that connects to that segment there, and then that goes, it shows that it actually goes through the gap in there and connects to this one. So that segment, that segment is tied to that segment, which then goes around. And does it go to the V? I think it might go to the V. I think we have a winner. So that common is, you know, there's some issue with that common. Now, whether or not it's the driver chip we've got, shouldn't be. It's an industry standard driver chip. It's been around a long time, should be doing the business. There's no, you know, it's it's optimised for this kind of application. Um, you know, so I suspect it's more likely 
uh, something to do with the design of the uh, uh, manufacturer of the uh, LCD. It just doesn't, you know, they didn't optimize it right for the uh, supply voltage, but <laughs> I guess you could say, what do we expect for like a hundred bucks tooling, you know, <laughs> for our five LCDs delivered or 138 US bucks delivered? <laughs> ridiculously cheap. And uh, we got a pretty half decent LCD out of it. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal that they can do this for the price. They're obviously not making money on it. They're hoping for the big order. Well, gave it a bit of a clean up, but it's still there. But curiously, this segment, which is part of these, which I thought was dodgy before, faded before, is not faded anymore. So I... Yeah, anyway. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, hook it up to an external supply. I've broken into a track underneath, which uh, has the just the supply for the HT1622 uh, LCD driver. And I've currently got it set to 3.3 volts, and I'll change it in uh, 0.1 volt increments. So I know I am viewing it from the ideal 6 o'clock uh, angle here. But anyway, let's go down to 3.2, see what happens. Oh, there we go, 3.1, 3.1, it's fading, 3.0, look at that, <laughs> hopeless, so I'd expect 3.4 to be rocks, oh, there we go, 3.7 now, it's rock solid, 4 volts, oh, now we're starting to see some uh, ghosting on the segments now, you don't want that, that's no good, so... That's at 4 volts, so you definitely don't want to run it at 4. 3.8, 3.7, 3.6. 3 3.6 seems to be, I'm going to say that's ideal. Look at that, now we're looking down like that. That's 3.6 volts, 3.5 volts, sorry. That's 3.6, there you go. That's 3.5, 3.4 volts, and 3.3. And sure enough, we have our ghost in segments or our faded segments, whatever you want to call it. And 3.2, oh, yeah, it's horrible. So 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 
that we had an issue with our bargain basement, um, hundred dollar, hundred US dollars for five LCDs. Um, that's the tool in charge. That's everything, and uh, thirty bucks courier to get it here. Um, it's it's basically you know it's it's peanuts. It really is. Although it did take a couple of months, but you expect that when you're paying like that ridiculously low rate. That's just crazy low. So anyway, um. Yeah, we'll talk to the LCD manufacturer. I might do a follow-up video or I'll just follow up on the uh, EEV blog forum with comments or something like that. But 3.6, I reckon that's the go. And that's quite a nice LCD. There you go. So that is, that's the part three in how to design your own custom LCD. It's not that hard. It wouldn't necessarily be this cheap for you. I mean, we found a very cheap manufacturer who won't say uh, who it is. But uh, they they look, you know, quite reputable um, and large-ish. So, you know, it's not like um, some, you know, someone's uh, kitchen. Um, so it's not like someone's uh, kitchen table in, in Shenzhen or something like that or the back room at the uh, Shenzhen markets. Um, so this is quite a large uh, LCD company doing this. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess you might get what you pay for in this case. You know, they sort of, oh, it's a, one of these hundred buck uh, prototype jobs. We'll just slap it together. You know, she'll be right. No worries. Um, so it's, you know, it's hard to say uh, where the issue is. But I'm very impressed with that for a fully custom LCD like that. Um, for five of, of course, we, we had to sort of not promise them, but we had to give them a ballpark of, you know, look, we're serious and we're thinking about making thousands of these things. So, you know, we might order, you know, 5,000 LCDs or something like that, um, in the future and sort of, yeah, they were happy to give us these prototypes for a hundred bucks. So I hope the uh, takeaway from this uh, little video series for you is that, hey, it's not that difficult, um, or expensive to custom design your own LCD. You probably won't, might not be able to get it for this uh, price, but you know, typical prices might be you know two, three hundred dollars or something like that for uh, prototype uh, LCDs. And if you only want, you know, a, like a few dozen of them or something like that, then it's even a viable option at the, that sort of price. It could make or break your uh, product, for example, and it makes your product look custom and professional, doesn't it? I really like it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So anyway, if you liked that video, please give it a big thumbs up, as always, and uh, discuss below, either in YouTube comments or on the EEV blog forum. Hope you found it interesting. Catch you next time.